uh, coming your way in just a matter of moments here on the Alcorn State University Football Radio Network. Glad you can join us. Charles Edmund here with Braves head football coach Jay Hobson following a very successful high school day, over 3,000 students. And uh, I put a, a picture up on my Twitter page. Uh, my wife actually took the picture in the Whitney Arena. The side that she shot was jam-packed. And uh, I would say it was closer to, closer to 4,000 students there, maybe more than that. It really was. It was a, a big turnout, and that's great to see because, uh, you know, again, young students getting up here and visiting our beautiful campus, and hopefully uh, we'll have a lot of them become Alkanites. Yes, that's right, and uh, that's a very important deal. It's kind of the athletic equivalent of, uh, of, of bringing recruits on campus. No Special <laughs> visit day, that's right. All right, we are live here at the flagship station of the Alcorn Football Radio Network, WPRL 91.7 FM. Glad you can join us on this Monday night for the Jay Hobson Radio Show. Give us a call at 601-877-6595, 601-877-6595. And you can send an email, football at allcorn.edu. A lot to talk about as we get ready for UAPB in Little Rock at War Memorial Stadium. As a matter of fact, it'll be the first of uh, it appears to be two straight visits uh, to uh, Little Rock in the next couple of years. So we'll talk more about that a little bit later with Braves head football coach Jay Hobson. All right, coach, uh, the Concordia game on Saturday. Boy, it was uh, kind of nip and tuck through the first half. Got a big play at the end, which kind of jump-started this team. Yeah, it was definitely, uh, you know, and we warned our players about that. You know, Concordia was a team, Charles, I think me and you talked about it on Thursday. Uh, they're a team that... Uh, you know, battled Lane College tooth and nail to a last second game, and Lane College actually almost upset Bethune Cookman. Bethune beat them 10 to 7. So we tried to, you know, sometimes uh, you have to live and learn on the football field, you know, but uh, that was one of the messages we kept selling to our players was look, Bethune, we know it beaten Grambling, and Bethune's always one of the top programs in uh, FCS football and in the MEAC. And we said, hey, this is a football team, they're a well-coached football team, and they came out and played hard. You know, and we talk about this, this is kind of what, what we call the media coach speak. And you said it, and I was telling somebody, a number of people the last two days, and as the game was progressing, as we hit the Hail Mary at the end, I'm saying, you know what, you kind of, you know, you, you kind of threw this out there two or three days prior to it. I'll be darned if it didn't happen. Well, it's relative, and uh, had we not answered the bell in the second half, we would have been in the same situation as Bethune. We had been battling to the end, but uh, thankfully we woke up and, and at halftime and um, came out and started playing like a, a good football team should. All right, let's get to the highlights here. Five minutes after 6 o'clock, give us a call, 601-877-6595, 601-877-6595. Well, there was three minutes left, uh, three minutes in, Jay, uh, Jay Hobson. You know, trying to solve Concordia's defense. I mean, we had some starts and stops, and you look at the game in totality, we scored on big plays, but, you know, getting a lot done was tough against this defense. Yeah, we, we had a lot of, I think, early in the first half, though, we, well, we certainly had some mis-executions on, on some critical um, situations that uh, whether it was drop passes, whether it was miss blocking assignment, uh, you know, things that you can't do. And, uh, you know, I think that's something that really, you know, give credit to Concordia that played good, but also, you know, you have to execute and that's something we didn't do. And I thought the way the game was going in the first quarter, Coach, that our defense would have to make the first statement. And as we set up the first score, Concordia started at their own 12-yard line was backed up to their own five, and after a 20-yard punt by Grahalis, the Braves started at the Hornets' 25-yard line with four minutes and 20 seconds left in the first quarter. But as difficult as it was, Jay Hobson, we got something a little easy. We had a short field. Yeah, Marquise um, did a great job there. And, and again, he made another huge play before half. He was actually our offensive player of the game. But uh, certainly a good job by the defense uh, getting the ball back on the plus side of the field and the offense stuck in the end zone. I don't know if my eyes were deceiving me, but on the point after, I was looking for Hayden McRaney, and I saw Anthony Williams the third out there attempting the point after. Well, Anthony is a young believer, not that 
he's made 45 and 50 yarders, or at least 45, with plenty of room to spare. And um, you know, we felt like this might be a good opportunity for him to get a little uh, kicking in. And, and uh, of course, he made the first one, and then came back, missed, missed the, we had the offsides or the lead procedure, and he missed the second one. But then we, we went back to Hayden. It was my understanding during the fall in one of the scrimmages that he was attempting to uh, see the field goals of PAT. He was, and, and like I said, he's he's really a natural. He does a good job with it. I mean, he, he got an extremely strong leg. So, uh, you know, he's actually, I mean, he had a kickoff that went down about 10, but he has put it in the end zone. And so we were just uh, letting him get a few kicks in. So the Braves led 6 to nothing after the missed PAT. The next Concordia drive started at their own 24-yard line with 3.54 left in the first quarter. Stephen Maxwell, 35 yards rushing on the drive, got to the Braves' 38-yard line, and that's how the quarter ended. You, know, you had two running backs, Montgomery and Maxwell, and believe it or not, and I was reading some of the blogs Saturday night into Sunday, uh, Montgomery actually was at Jackson State at one point, and he left there to go to Concordia. Just talk about those two dynamics, Maxwell, Montgomery to start the well, Maxwell. It's interesting when you look at a Concordia roster because we talked about the 120 players. Yeah. There's a lot of guys that we popped up. I remember Coach Thomas in the dressing room saying, I, you know, that kid I think played for me at Delta back three, three <laughs> years ago. You know, and yeah. it's amazing how, how those guys just kind of pop up in at Concordia. So they do have athletes. And we said that on, on the uh, show last week. I mean, we knew there were going to be some good athletes coming into town, and, and some of them, you know, have had a journey, and, and that's where they landed up in Concordia. But at the end of the day, hey, they were athletic, and uh, again, they had some players that I can remember recruiting on the road the last couple of years, and then there were some uh, players certainly that uh, transferred. So, I mean, that's that's what you get in the NAIA, or as you would say, the, the conference that they're in, yeah. which actually, had, I guess, can have more players than yes. the NAIA. Yes, and um, at the end of that first quarter, Jay Hobson, it was just a six to nothing game, kind of back and forth. John Gibbs had a tough start. Yeah, uh, you know we had we had a couple of well, you know John came out on third down and hit a great, had a nice throw right in there. We had a couple drops, uh, then had a little uh, had a little protection issue on the second third, uh, but again, uh, you know we he bounced back and we came back in the second half, really the end of the second quarter with a couple of huge plays that got us moving. Nine minutes after 6 o'clock, we'll be taking your call, 601-877-6595. Glad you can join us up and down the Alcorn Football Radio Network on this Monday night. We get ready for UAPB, a team that lost to Alabama A&M this past Saturday, and they're kind of learning on the fly with a new quarterback. Of course, Benjamin Anderson for four years led him to a championship in his first year, so they're kind of in a makeover mode. But, uh, hey, you can't, you can't let that bother you as you get ready to get back into the grind of the conference. We'll take this time out, and when we come back, we'll look at the second quarter highlights when we return on the Jay Hobson Radio Show. Yeah, I think there's a few that I, I, I think says there were three or four of me coached like four years ago. It, it, uh, some of them might have been 26, 27 years old out there. Turn, turn it up. Yeah. You never know. Oh, you don't know, Charles, you don't know what's going to go on. It's C. Edmund at allcorn.edu. 601-877-2480. And for Myrtle Hedrick, traffic director, it's Myrtle at allcorn.edu. 601-877-6290. WPRL 91.7 FM, your university community-minded radio station. All right, welcome back. We are live here on the beautiful campus of Alcorn State University as the Braves defeated Concordia College 42-7. Coach, we talked about it last week. You know, you always get film on these teams. You break it down all the way as far as you can do it. How easy or how difficult was it to find film and information on Concordia? Well, it's always difficult. I, I mean, uh, that's, that's something that uh, um, we, we eventually did have film. So, I mean, the bottom line is, uh, you know, and you have to cut through some of the film sometimes because sometimes the film is not, you know, of the best quality. So, you know, it is a journey, but they'll, they'll tell you that is what it is. I mean, you know, we have to be ready to play on Saturday and 
that had nothing to do with the, the you know the slow start. You know, for me, I had to look at who they played more so than Concordia. You had to look up Warner. You had to look up Lane, and they had the box scores, and you had to kind of deal with the rosters and kind of pick through it as well. So it, was, it definitely was not easy trying to prepare for the game. All right, 12 minutes after, we're going to go to the phone lines here. As always, Willie has been calling in every week from Mobile. Let's uh, check in with him. Good evening, Willie. How you doing, Mr. Evan? How you doing? Good evening. Uh, how you doing, Coach Hodge? Hey, Willie. How's everything? Everything is good. Everything is good. Um, I'm uh, I'm not really uh, trying to push, you know, forward to Grambling, you know, because, you know, we have a lot of respect for, you know, Coach Coleman, you know what I'm saying, and his team. No question about it. We're, we're, we're a one-team focus right now, Willie. Yeah, I can right, promise so, you that. So I'm not going to bring that up, but starting next week, you best believe I got something for you. But um, that's a, you know, different thing. Okay. But um, this week, um, I actually I have a real good question. Okay. okay. Um, my dad graduated from UAPB in 1976. Okay. He played football there. Yeah. Okay. With the running back there, you know, back in the day. And he... You know, not too long ago, he was talking about how football back whenever he was playing is totally different from the way we play football now. You know, whenever he was at right. UAPD, right. they were, you know, under center, you know, kind of like, right. a, you know, wishbone. I think that's what he said. It was, it was more okay. between the tackles game. It was it, that, That's a very true statement. Okay. So now you look at, you know, what we do and what, you know, a lot of people around us are doing. You know, they're throwing the ball. And just talk about how football has changed in the past, I don't know, 50 years maybe, 40 years maybe, and how something like a a team that, you know, with kind of offense that you won't see like a triple option, how hard it will be to, you know, prepare since we, we don't see it every day. Well, football is definitely a different game. And it's ever-changing and evolving. That's the thing about football is it never really stays the same. But definitely back when your dad was playing, it was a between-the-tackles game. You know, you were running the ball, you know, probably 60, 70 times a game. You know, you might throw it 10 or 12 times back in the day. There were probably a few teams that were trying to air it out, but not many. And it, and it was a uh, it was a power game. You know, it was just it was power football. And, uh, you know, today it, it's more of a, uh, you know, it's more of a space game. You know, at the end of the day, you have to play in space, and, and uh, I think that it is two completely different concepts. But it ever changes. You know, I, you know, you go through the '70s and '80s, like you just mentioned, Willie. The wishbone took off. You know, and then all of a sudden, you know, the eye became big with pro and twins, and and then man, I can remember as a young coach when the team broke out to one back. We were like, "What is this? One back?" And everybody was, you know, and, and of course we can all remember back in '84 when the gunslinger was going what I call a duck formation and he was putting the linemen out wide and empty sets and, you know, and, you know, the game ever changes and then, you know, you go into the 90s and, you know, defensively, Jimmy Johnson, everything was really an eight-man front game on defense and all of a sudden the 4-3 and quarters became a big deal and, and, you know, it just, you know, football and Coach Spurrier had the fun and gun down in Florida and he was, you know, uh, all of a sudden it was all a, a ten personnel game, and, and you know, it, but it just ever changes. And then you know, uh, Art Riles and some of those guys brought in a lot of the run pass dimension stuff that we have today. So I mean, it's just it's an ever changing game, and it, you know, in every you know ten years or so, you know, a new a new wrinkle shows up, you know, and you have to adjust and adapt to it. But I think what your dad says, there's a lot of wisdom in that, a lot of truth. I mean, it, it, it was a different game, and it, it'll be a different game 10 years from now than it is today. Okay, thanks, Willie. All right, Willie, we appreciate it. And how long do you think, Coach, with this you know, zone read, how long do you think that's going to that's gonna stick? You, you think 10 years from now we'll still be talking you zone read? Never, you just never know, Charles. You really don't. You never know. It, it's uh, it's a constant. You know, I said football is. That's the one thing about the game. And like I said, I, I've only been involved in the coaching aspect for a quarter of a century, 25 years, but it's changed a lot in 25 years. So, you know, another 25 years from now, I'm sure there'll be a lot of changes. 
All right, Will, we appreciate your call here. 16 minutes after, let's get back into the second quarter highlights. We talked about Maxwell and Montgomery. It was 6 to nothing going into the second quarter. The Braves' first drive of the second quarter started at their own 30-yard line with 11 and a half minutes left. Jordan Payne for no gain on first down, bringing up a second down and 10. Second and 10, here's Ragsdale. Ragsdale steps out of a tackle, 35, 40. Down the sideline, Ragsdale to midfield, and Ragsdale brought down at the 41-yard line. Ragsdale over 130 yards rushing in the ball game. So it was first and 10 from Concordia's 42. Two plays later was third and 12 from their own 44-yard line. Here's a big play in this first half. Ray's at the 45 of the Hornets. Gives one-handed catch. Check down to Ragsdale. Ball is loose. Squirting around, and Concordia's got it. Concordia's got it inside the 30 to the 25-yard line. It was caught a lateral, and Concordia has recovered. Talk about that. Well, I mean, it was a forward pass, so, I mean, it's, it's unfortunate that we had to give the ball up right there, so. But, you know, the lesson of that is whether it's forward or backwards, if it's ruled backwards, you got to get on, get on it and tackle it. So a turnover there for the Braves. The Hornets had it first and 10 at the Braves' 26-yard line with 9.23 left in the first half. The drive stalls, and Brahalis missed a 42-yard field goal. After a three and out for the Braves, Concordia's next drive started at their own 38 with 6.08 left in the first half, and there was a third down and 11. William Jordan lobs snap out of the gun, back to pass. Pressure is going to lob this along downfield. Wide open. Caught. It was wide open. The receiver running a post hung in there, took the hit. And it's Maxwell with the catch. So that kept the drive alive. First and 10 from the Braves, 17. Montgomery, a loss of four. The drive stalled in a 38-yard field goal for Concordia right here. Snap back ball now. Kick is up. Wow. He's got the distance. Does it have the accuracy? No good. No, he missed it wide right. So a couple of missed field goals, Jay Hobson. Yeah, we had a nice block on one, the first one. The second one was good pressure, too, that, that I think kind of calls there and kick. But... Uh, you know, definitely a great job by the defense, uh, stepping up and bowing it back down there when it was backed up, and it was a nice job. So 2.46 left in the first half. The Braves started at their own 21-yard line, converted two third downs, including a third and 18. There was a delay of game in there, and then four seconds left. The Braves were at their own 38-yard line. You know, we've had a Hail Mary. Remember last year against the Louisiana College, I believe we had a Hail Mary. Four seconds left till halftime. Now we have a whistle and a flag. It's like all coin is pretty much out of sync on all sides. I don't, I don't know what's going on. Uh, it looked like this, he wanted to throw a halfback pass. It looked like it was a quarterback throwback. And then he ended up hitting the short receiver. So I don't, I don't know. Gibbs out of the shotgun. Braves at the 37. Gibbs back to pass. Steps up. Gibbs looks going to lob this one long down the field. And this ball is caught. Over. He gets in. Wow, Charles, it's amazing some things that you say, you know, I mean, this game reminded me of Louisiana College. <laughs> yeah, it was almost identical, to, and that's what I said after the game to the team. I was like, you know, and we needed the Hail Mary because, you know, that was a nip and tuck going into halftime, and then we got the Hail Mary that kind of gave us the two point, you know, gave us the lead, and then we came out the second half and started to roll in the third quarter. But it just, I mean, it was almost, I mean, I was, I remember thinking that on the sidelines. This is reminding me of Democrat of Louisiana College last year. Yeah, you, now, you, you told Cedric Tillman, and I know in sports sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. I mean, it was definitely a tough first, uh, first half for us. But that play, I mean, you had a receiver trailing uh, Wofford, and that was well executed. It was well executed, um, you know, certainly. Um, they let us get behind them, though, which, you know, I mean, there's three seconds to go and, you know, there's 70 yards to go to the end zone. But uh, at the end of the day, Marquise is such a competitor. You know, he really is. I mean, you know, he catches it and, you know, he, he went about nine different directions <laughs> after he caught it and wiggled into the end zone. I mean, he, he really is. He, he, he loves to compete. And, and that's one of the things that I just love about Marquise is he just loves to compete and play football. And uh, he makes plays, and that's for sure. 
it was a two score lead on that uh, with that big play at the end of the first half. Is was it? A, is it a safe statement that it was some some pretty raw emotion in the locker room? Considering the assumption is you could have put 80 points up on this team, but it didn't happen, and everybody was kind of on the edge of their seats. Judge Bush was squirming in the box next to me. I mean, it was, it was a lot going on up there, and everybody assumed that it would be easy, but it wasn't. Well, I mean, that, and that's football. And like I said, and I, and I, I I knew this was possible just because I saw what had happened to Bethune, and I knew Bethune had a good football team. I mean, they always do, and, and of course, after I know Grambling's got a good football team, and Bethune beat them, and I'm looking at Lane College play Bethune to 10-7, to 7, and, you know, and I'm thinking, okay, here we are. You know, that certainly helped to get 13-0 at half, and, but uh, that's one of the things we talk to our players about, and, you know, at the end of the day, I'm not really so much worried about what Concordia was doing, but just worried about uh, what we were doing execution-wise, and I think that's something that uh, we corrected real quick in the third quarter. And uh, we came out of the gate, um, you know, really playing well. And I think, you know, then we just began to open it up in the third. Yeah, we'll talk about that when we come back. 23 minutes after 6 o'clock, a lot to talk about here. We'll get to the SWAC report. We had a major injury of a, of a player in our conference that's gotten a lot of attention. Um, one of the Braves opponents for 2016 has been named. We'll talk about that. And we'll talk about UAPB. We'll hear from Monty Coleman. He'll join us coming up. Here on the Jay Hobson Radio Show, we'll take a one-minute break, and we'll be right back. Homecoming at all corners, a very special time. A lot to see and a lot to do. And you can add golf to your list of homecoming activities as the Alcorn State University Alumni Foundation will have the 7th Annual Purple and Gold Golf Tournament Friday, October 16th at the Clear Creek Golf Course in Bovina. A two-person scramble with the top three teams receiving prizes. There's even a huge monetary payout for a whole in one. For more information, call the tournament director, Dr. Henry Hank Harper at 601-750-7660 or if you to Norwood at 601-209-1920 or athletics director Derek Horn at 601-877-6500. Corporate sponsorships available along with gold, silver, bronze, and home sponsorships. That's the 7th Annual Purple and Gold Golf Tournament, Friday, October 16th at the Clear Creek Golf Course in Bovina. All a part of Homecoming 2015. Go Braves! All right, uh, welcome back. We are live here at the Jay Hobson Radio Show as we kind of put a capper on Concordia College on what was a very successful high school and community colleges day. Uh, over 3,000 students registered. They probably had about 4,000 plus in the gym. And on my Twitter page, Tall Man Radio, my wife actually took a picture. She was a part of the program, and she said it was awesome. She said it was off the chain. And she wanted to give a, a, a thumbs up, two thumbs up to everybody involved because she was a part of the program and it was a job well done by everybody. So go to Tall Man Radio and you look at the picture, the upper deck of the Whitney Arena was jam-packed. It looked like an Alcorn Jackson State basketball game or something. It was, it was just that great. So a good job had by all on Saturday. It was a warm day and it turns out a good day for football as the Braves beat Concordia College. If so you look at the third quarter highlights, uh, Jay Hobson, the Braves, after a 15-yard kickoff return by Jarvis Turner, started at their 15-yard line. Gibbs out of the shotgun on first down. And here's Ragsdale turning it up. And Ragsdale with a big hole to the 30, 35, 40. Look at him go to the 50, 45, 40, 30, 20. Touchdown. 85 yards. Well, how about it? We ended the first half with a score. We start the second half with a score. Yeah, I was really proud of, of the offense right there. They really, uh, you know, that, that's that's a great thing to see. Came at halftime and, and, you know, put some quick scores on the board and, and uh, really started executing. So that made it a 20, a 19 to nothing uh, ball game, and uh, there was a bobble on the PAT attempt there. Yeah, we um, got to get it get it placed down and get it kicked. So Concordia's first drive of the third quarter started at their own 24-yard line, picked up a first down, then they were faced with a third down and 19. Jordan straight back to pass on the play action, steps up, he's sacked. Boy, he was thrown down like a, like a rag doll. Eric Foster with the sack. George straight back to pass, here comes the pressure, and down he goes. Nobody was open, he had to eat it, Damian Watkins. We wound up with eight sacks on the day, and I thought when they did try to throw the football and stretch the field, we had continuous pressure. Yeah, we did. I, I think we've, uh, like I 
incentives is certainly up front. We, we you know, at, we're the unit that uh, is playing hard, and, and that's always good to see. So with the Braves defense stepping up as we forward this action here, the next Braves drives 10 minutes left in the third, starting at their own 27-yard line. Aaron Baker with a 10-yard run to the 37. Wofford with a loss of six. That brings up second down and 16 from their own 31-yard line. Five play, 73 yard drive. Yeah, really, really big play. Jordan's had a bunch of big plays this year and uh, came up again with a big one there. So that made it 26 to nothing, uh, Jay Hobson, at the end of the third quarter. The Braves got into the red zone again, approaching another score, winding down the third. So I guess the message was delivered, and I guess the team got the message coming out in the third quarter. Well, they, they just started, you know, there was nothing, no, nothing magic about it. We just started playing good football, and uh, that's what happens. So 28 minutes after we approach the bottom of the hour, we'll look at the fourth quarter highlights. Um, we're going to hear from Darren Ragsdale, who had a big game. Cedric Tillman talked with him after the ball game, and we'll recap the Concordia game, put a lid on it. The SWAC report is coming up. The Braves, one of their opponents for 2016, has been said. We'll talk about that, recap the SWAC action. A lot of high scoring in the league over the weekend and we'll look ahead to UAPB. We'll take a one-minute break, and we'll be right back on the Jay Hobson Radio Show. State University is a great place to receive a great education, and here's why. Old Court is ranked as a top university in the top schools, regional universities, in the South category of the U.S. News and World Report Best Colleges Rankings. There are other great reasons to choose Old Court State University. Whether it's personal, whether it's in education, anywhere you turn, there's always a helping hand. If they want to be challenged to learn and grow and be in an environment that is nurturing, a place where they're not just a number, where people know you by name, then I would tell them to come to Alcorn. For more information, call toll-free 1-800-222-6790 or visit us on the web at www.alcorn.edu. You are too. And welcome back to the Jay Hobson Radio Show as we approach the bottom of the hour. For fans traveling to Little Rock on Saturday, the Alumni Host Hotel is the Double Tree Little Rock at 424 West Markham Street. Rooms are $109 for Saturday with the group code ASU. Call area code 501-372-4371 to book your room today. Let's get on the road and support Braves football. We approach the bottom of the hour. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. You're listening to the Allcorn Football Radio Network. You are tuned in to WPRL 91.7 FM, broadcasting from the campus of Allcorn State University. Charles Edmond here on the Allcorn Football Radio Network with Braves head football coach Jay Hobson here in studio. Your Braves getting ready for UAPB in Little Rock at War Memorial Stadium. If you look at the fourth quarter highlights, the Braves were on the march into third, Jay Hobson, as we begin the fourth, first and goal from the Hornets' one-yard line. First and goal, Baker on straight in, up, cuts it inside, touchdown. Aaron Baker from a couple of yards out, the Braves are over 30 points for the third straight game, and the Braves are up 32 to nothing. Aaron Baker, who had a couple of touchdowns last week, gets it going for the Braves. Cedric Tillman here in the fourth. Yep, 33 to nothing. At that point, and Aaron Baker, you know, it's a pretty good mix when you look at Ragsdale and you look at Aaron Baker, different dynamics. Yeah, they are. They're both uh, two extremely talented uh, backs, so blessed to have both of them, and uh, both uh, do a tremendous job for us. We talk about protecting the football. We had a turnover in the fourth, 1355 left, starting at Concordia's 38 yard line. Gibbs a one yard gain, second and nine. Gibbs to Walford, nine yard catch. And there was a fumble there, and you know you talk about getting extra yards. We had three turnovers in the game, and I'm sure that's something you've been talking about. Yeah, well, it's just uh, you know, and a couple of them too have been some of the younger guys too in the third and fourth quarter. And uh, when you get your opportunity, you got to hold on to the ball. But it's um, you know, again, those were drive stoppers in the second half, which we were marching and 
on that side of the field. So uh, you know, those things you just can't do. It's just part of football. You got to protect the football at all times. Nine thirteen left in the fourth quarter. The Norse footman in, Joe Price in. There was a third down and thirteen on this drive from the Hornets' forty-three yard line. Jordan Payne, could this be a second touchdown? Turns it up the field, 20, 10, yep, touchdown. Jordan Payne, 44 yards. Boy, he got that one in space, Cedric Tillman, and off to the races he went. You talk about nice touch, and Footman, when he's seen action, those nice touch passes. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, Norris had a, it was a beautiful pass. I mean, the Norris, we talk about this every week. I mean, it's great to get the Norris in, he deserves to play some of the an excellent athlete, and um, but uh, came in, made a big play. Jordan had a nice catch from John and Lenoris, two two long touchdown receptions by Jordan too. So he continues to make big plays. Forty to nothing at that point in the defense pitching a shutout. I was looking at defensive coordinator Tony Pecoraro over to our left, and you know, you know he wanted to pitch the shutout. There was 7:47 left in the football game. Concordia started at midfield. There was a third down and 11. Anthony Williams, the third with a pick. It was wiped out by a roughing the passer penalty. So we pick up the action right here. Chambers back to pass, being chased, looks, throws. He's got some separation in this ball. It's wow. caught. Touchdown. And that got Tony Pecoraro, defensive coordinator, up. Touchdown. Concordia Marquise Wade, the sophomore wide receiver from Jackson. Southwest Mississippi Community College transfer got behind the secondary. And with 2.49 left, Concordia on the board, and it's 40-6. to Well, just, you know, we started, we played in the secondary, our youngsters, our whole fourth quarter, so we had all our backups in. And, and uh, you know what? That's the way you have to learn in the back end. <laughs> you hate to say it, and it but, uh, you know, it's, um, I don't think there's a DB alive that had been burned, and I think that's just, you know, it's, and it's good that it happens in those scenarios. I mean, those are good learning scenarios for our young DBs. And, um, you know, they're, they're, we certainly have a lot of young, talented uh, freshman DBs that will be great football players, but they need to get that, uh, that learning experience under the belt. Darius Dean with a couple of carries on the next Brave drive, and time kind of whittled away, and the Braves won 42-7 in the ball game. A big day for Darian Ragsdale in the backfield. Nine carries, 136 yards, including the big 85-yard run, and after the game, he spoke with Cedric Tillman. Ragsdale getting the glad hand, and uh, Cedric, let's uh, check in with you with uh, Darian Ragsdale. Well, you guys kind of got off to a slow start there. Uh, so talk about some of the things that was going on out there in the first half. Uh, it really just, we played, we started off real slow. Miscommunication is pretty much really just starting off slow. We had to pick it up on the second half. Yeah, uh, talk about the second half there. The first play in the second half, we come out with that long run for a touchdown. Uh, so I just knew it was going to be over. I had faith in my whole line. So I knew I was going to bust it and take it to the house. So Ragsdale with a big day, and we'll break down the game coming up, give you the final numbers, put a capper on this one. 601-877-6595. 601-877-6595. Give us a call. We appreciate uh, Willie calling in earlier. We'll be taking your phone calls, questions, and comments, and we'll be right back on the Jay Hobson Radio Show in 60 seconds. 91.7 FM is always trying to stay one step ahead of the curve. Done it again with a new and improved website, WPRL.org. It's got all the latest in national and local news, as well as your favorite WPRL shows and personalities. From these words to be praised gospel program with Jay Miles to Jazzy Jazz, and R&B with Jamario Brooks, student shows, and of course, all of your Alcorn State University sports broadcasts. You can listen to WPRL.org from your cell phone or tablet, Android or Apple. Just go to TuneIn Radio and type in LIFE 91.7 WPRL in the search box. Anytime, anywhere, any source. Desktop, laptop, cell phone or tablet, WPRL as you covered. For more information, call 601-877-6290. All of this from 91.7 WPRL and on WPRL. All right, 36 minutes after 6 o'clock here on the Jay Hobson Radio Show. Give us a call, 601-877-6595.
All right, uh, let's look at the final numbers and put a cap on this one. 490 yards of total offense, Jay Hobson, 277 um, in the air and 213 on the ground. We talked about Ragsdale, 136 yards rushing. So what, what impressed you the most when you look at the offense and how it got going? Well, I just thought we came out and we started executing. So that, that, that's, you know, that was the biggest difference. You know, early in the first half, we had some drops, critical drops on third down. We had a couple protection busts on third down. And, and, and you, know, you know, you don't want to see that. You know, and, um, you know, I think, um, you know, in the second half, we really didn't have any of that. You know, we, the only thing that happened in the second half, we stopped ourselves with a couple fumbles. You know, but I thought we were moving the ball well like, like we did. You know, so it's it's good to have a game like that, Charles, because very seldom do you go through a season and play 11 great games, you know. And I remember last year that game that hit us was, if you remember, when we went to Grambling, we were just kind of like asleep. You know, we were down 21 nothing before we got off the bus. I yeah. think I think we kicked off 21-0 down. I mean, it was like, bang, Grambling just put it on us. Bang, bang, bang in the first five, six minutes of the game. And I felt a little bit like that Saturday, you know what I'm saying, the first – you know, uh, six, seven, eight minutes of the ball game. And, uh, you know, this is a great game to have because you come out of it with a win. You know what I'm saying? It's always great when you have that game and you come out with a win. And uh, so you know, that that's that's a big positive. And, and uh, so hopefully, uh, you know, and, and again, the other good thing is too is it's good to see a football team come in halftime and then kick it into another gear. And I thought, Defensively, I thought, uh, you know, I was pretty impressed with the way we, we, you know, kept them out. You know, there a couple times they were down in the red zone and down that area, and, and those guys hung in there and fought tough. And, and uh, you know, we had some learning points, too, in the fourth quarter with the young guys. When you come in, you, 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 hey, you're supposed to keep that goose egg going. But I thought uh, there, there were a lot of positives coming out of it. And, um, you know, we just got to – you know, this one's behind us now. It's water under the bridge and move on to the next one. Again, you know, I was stopped on the street the last couple of days. Like, what in the world? You know, that first half and reading the blogs. And when you look at it, that first half, was it more Concordia or was it more not what we were doing? Well, I mean, I'm a football coach at Alcorn State University, so I'm going to say it's the execution of, of what we're doing, what we were doing, you know. But I uh, give Concordia credit, too. I mean, they played hard. And, and like I said, and you thought I was lying to you on Thursday, <laughs> but. The proof tells that you yeah. know that Concordia Lane that if they can play if they can beat Bethune Cookman or, or hold him almost beat him by three points. We knew, you know, we had a team that was capable of, you know, giving us a, a run, and uh, you know that's something that uh, our guys you know answer the bell, and um, you know it's good to get that W. It really, is. and Louisiana College was the same game last year. I mean, you you hit it right on. The head with the Hail Mary at the end. If you remember, you know, we were down. The only good news about this game is we were never down. At Louisiana College, we were getting beat 10 to nothing, and they were driving to go up 17 to nothing, if you remember. And we, we were like, oh, you know, and then we, we settled down, hit the Hail Mary at the end of the half, and then we came back out the second half and played Alcorn State football. Well, then uh, the same question, we talk about it week one, Georgia Tech. The question, should we play up? And obviously, we are a game like this, does it change your view at all about playing uh, a Concordia or an NAI school again? No, I mean, that's, I, I, I love the way we schedule, you know, and, and uh, like I said, we played Georgia Tech, we played Mississippi State, we played Arkansas State, we played James Madison, we played Warner, we played Concordia, we played uh, Edward Waters, you know, but at the end of the day, uh, next year, as you mentioned, we're playing the MEAC SWAC Challenge and Arkansas, so we, we won't have a NAIA game next year. We'll have a MEAC SWAC game and the SEC opponent. So uh, you know, you know, I, I think we do uh, our scheduling extremely well, and, and we do what we need to do to help our university, and uh, that is the bottom line. When we look at the final numbers, Jay Hobson. We talked about Ragsdale offensively. Walford, uh, we had two receivers over 100 yards. Warford and Jordan Payne, a Payne with 112, Warford with 102, gives 198 yards passing, Hayden McRaney with three punts. Defensively, Jay Hobson, uh, we had eight sacks, Darren Anderson with a couple, Foster with a couple, and Watkins, those three were all over the place. They really were. They really were. Uh, 
we, we, it was hard picking a defensive player of the game. Because Eric Foster, as you mentioned, had a tremendous game. Damon Watkins had a tremendous game. Uh, our player of the game was Stacy Garner, though. Stacy was extremely um, solid. He's been, he's been playing great football, Stacy's, uh, you know, all year, and, uh, and he was our defensive player of the game. And I'm sure that was a, that was a pretty good discussion there, considering you had a lot of folks do some good things. It really was. It really was. It was a uh, it was a tough one. And, you know, as we mentioned, Marquise Warford on offense. You know, again, Jordan Payne had another great day, and, but uh, he was our player on offense. We'll take a timeout, get to our SWAC report, and we'll look ahead to UAPB. We'll hear from their head coach, Monty Coleman. They lost to Alabama A&M in Huntsville this past Saturday, and they'll be playing the Braves in War Memorial Stadium in Little Rock. We'll be at War Memorial two years in a row this Saturday, and next season in October. We'll talk more about that when we come back on the Jay Hobson Radio Show in 60 seconds. Get ready ASU and surrounding areas as the Alcorn State University Extension Program hosts the Extension This Week Radio Show. Extension This Week will offer weekly highlights of Extension's current and future programs, events, and activities. It will also offer important information in areas such as community gardening, health and fitness, and community resource development. We will air live from the reservation every Tuesday at 1.30 p.m. Hosted by 4A uh, Talk Specialist, Mrs. Noah Earth. First. So tune in to WPRL 91.7 FM All Form Public Radio, or you can also listen on the web at www.wprl.org. All right, welcome back. Uh, 43 minutes after uh, 6 o'clock. We're here on the Jay Hobson Radio Show, 601-877-6595, 601-877-6595. Well, let's get to our SWAC report, Jay Hobson, some high-scoring games in the uh, conference. Let's start with uh, the game in Athens between Georgia and Southern. Of course, uh, Georgia won 48-6, but Devon Gales was the story of that game. Um, he was injured, severely injured in that game against Georgia. He suffered a, a several fractures in his neck and that were stabilized. Um, thoughts and prayers are with uh, Southern and, their, and that player and that family. And that's sort of a tough deal, Jay Hobson, when, when those things happen. It's just the unfortunate part of the game. Yeah, it is. It, it's, there's nothing more tragic in, in football. Um, you know, it's a, um, uh, again, I had a teammate in college that, that, that happened to him, and it's just a, uh, you know, it's something that you pray every Saturday morning when you wake up that uh, it doesn't occur. And, and uh, you know, football is a violent sport, it's a contact sport, you know, and it's, it, that's certainly always a possibility, you know. But uh, we're praying for him and his family, and, um, you know, it's something that we constantly preach to our guys about and, and, and tackling and blocking and, and fundamentals of it all. But, very unfortunate deal, but just uh, just let his family know. And, and I, like I said, I had a teammate that, that happened to that uh, all prayers are, are with them, and I'm pleased they'll have a, a wonderful recovery. And we'll be following you know, that news as it goes along in the next uh, few days. Other scores, of course, the Braves opponent, UAPB, lost uh, to Alabama A&M 28-9. Um, Devin McKenzie scored three touchdowns, and A&M won the game 28-9 at Lewis Cruz Stadium. So uh, we'll be talking about that coming up. Of course, Grambling in a, in a, in a PlayStation type of game beat Prairie View 70-54. That was just an incredible game just following that throughout the course of it, 124 points scored, and uh, that's just unbelievable. Alabama State got in the win column, 45-15 at Mississippi Valley and a back and forth game in Jackson. The Tigers, I think the last team, Jackson State, the last team that yet to play a home game until this past Saturday. Ivy 22 of 27 for 370 yards and three touchdowns as Jackson State got in the win column as they uh, beat Texas Southern 34 to 30. So that's, uh, that's the SWAC report games uh, taking place uh, over the weekend, and of course, we talked about it a couple of times. We teased it. Um, I got a, a tweet about it last night about this time that uh, Alcorn will be playing at Arkansas next season, 
2016, and uh, the reports from hogsports.com are reporting that October 1st is the date, either War Memorial or in Fayetteville. However, they're reporting that uh, they had to switch a game from, uh, from Little Rock to Fayetteville, Louisiana Tech. So they're playing Tech in Fayetteville. Therefore, the Braves, it appears, will be playing in Little Rock October the 1st, 2016 against the Hogs. Um, you know, we talked about these schedules, and you talked about it last week. Bring it on. And then I guess, hey, we're going you know, to step in the SEC again. There's no question. It's, and, and hopefully we can get a lot of fans up there. Little Rock's not that far from, from our base. And, you know, that, that's a perfect game for us just because you get the, uh, the fans get to come to the game. It's not a long drive. And, uh, you know, just excited about that and really appreciate Arkansas playing us. Yeah, and that's, a, that's an interesting dynamic. And, of course, I saw Arkansas and Texas A&M the other night in Dallas in uh, that game they lost in in overtime. So we were playing again, playing up in the um, SEC. So our two games, we talked about the Swag Meack Challenge, Jay Hobson and, and Arkansas, and we're going to have a favorable home schedule next year. So uh, some interesting dynamics in 2016. Right. should, uh, you know, should be a, a, a great schedule, uh, it's a, certainly uh, a very uh, good one, I would think, financially, you know what I mean? So that's always a great thing. And then some news that just came down today. Larry Smith, Mr. Mean, inducted into Mississippi well Sports deserved. Hall of Fame. Well deserved. Wow. Nice. That's, uh, that is a terrific honor. The Golden State Warriors drafted Smith with the 24th pick in the 1980 NBA draft. He was selected to the 1981 All-Rookie Team. Known as Mr. Mean for a serious demeanor, Smith was one of the league's top rebounders in the 80s. He ranks third in Warriors franchise history behind Nate Thurman and Wilt Chamberlain with over 6,000 rebounds, 6,440 boards. Smith played in the NBA for 13 seasons with the Warriors, the Houston Rockets, and the San Antonio Spurs. He also is a former head basketball coach here at Alcorn. And you talk about an intense coach being around him for the years that he was on that sideline, it was just something to see. No question. And hey, I get uh, Mr. Mean and you, Charles. I, I might call it the old man <laughs> basketball league right there. I'll be. I just. Hey, I just, I just let y'all go right there. <laughs> hey, he would. We're, he would take me out big time. We'll, we'll put y'all together. <laughs> I, hey, I, I'm I, the same team. I'll have the tallest of my court, <laughs> in, in, certainly in Mississippi for sure. <laughs> 49 minutes after the hour. We'll take a time out here. When we come back, we'll look at UAPB. We'll break them down a bit. Monty Coleman will hear from the Lions head coach, and we'll get Jay Hobson's thoughts on what we can expect from UAPB, that game at War Memorial Stadium in Little Rock. It's a 4 o'clock kick. We'll take a one-minute break, and we'll be right back on the Jay Hobson Radio Show. If you're a business owner and are looking to promote your product, look no further than to Alcorn State University Athletics Marketing and Advertising. A great way to get the word out. Whether it's on pocket schedule cards, whether it's radio advertising on the Alcorn Sports Radio Network, whether it's online, whether it's website advertising on alcornsports.com, signage at the various athletic venues, as well as game sponsorship opportunities. Athletics has it all. For more information, call Athletics Director Derek Horn at 601-877-6500 or Larry Smith at 601-877-2413. Great sponsorship packages are available. That's all Corn State University Athletics Marketing and Advertising. For more information, call Derek Horn at 601-877-6500 or Larry Smith at 601-877-2413. All right, 50 minutes after the hour here on the Jay Hobson Radio Show with our producer in Studio A, Jamario Brooks. Don't forget the Braves in UAPB from War Memorial Stadium in Little Rock. We've been talking about uh, groups that have buses going to Little Rock. Uh, of course, uh, Mr. Quinn, Gerald Quinn, I think his bus is filled up, but he sent me a text. They're getting ready for Southern and Texas Southern. The Southern trip is in progress. and. They're getting a bus to go to Houston for the Texas Southern game in November. So for more information on those two trips, give them a call, 601-754-1177, 601-754-1177. We talked about Coach Smith being inducted into the Mississippi Sports Hall of Fame. One of his big achievements is developing the Braves Kids Club. And uh, I was at a meeting last week, got over, I uh, think, uh, 50 kids signed up. 
And uh, if you're a member of the Braves Kids Club, if, if you're not, you should ask your parents to sign up today. It's designed for kids ages 7 through 12. So the Braves Kids Club, one of his great crowning achievements. All right, 51 minutes after, as we look at UAPB, Jay Hobson, a team that was looking for some continuity, and uh, they're one and three. They beat Morehouse in overtime at home. Uh, they lost in the Swag Mia Challenge to South Carolina State, 35 to seven. They lost 24 to 20 to Texas Southern, and they lost 28 to nine to Alabama A&M this past Saturday in Huntsville. Here is a UA uh, PB head coach Monty Coleman, and you look at what he has done. Of course, five years ago, his team won the SWAC championship led by Benjamin Anderson. He's no longer there. So what do the Lions have in store? Monty Coleman talks about the game against Alabama A&M and looks forward to the game in Little Rock against the Braves. Very, very hard football game against Alabama A&M this past weekend. Uh, it was going to be a hostile crowd, so hopefully the crowd can All right, that is Monty Coleman, the head coach at UAPB. It's kind of been an up and down thing for him. He won a championship four years ago with Benjamin Anderson, now revamped offense, led by Marcus Terrell. Terrell in the game the other day, 15 of 25 for Buck 69. And then Nolan Sorensen, um, who backs him up, 6 of 16 in the game. So they'll probably play two quarterbacks. They have a, a back in Hanley that uh, at 5, 10, 200 will have to deal with. And uh, some young but uh, athletic receivers. So as you look at UAPB as a whole, Jay Hobson, what can we expect at War Memorial on Saturday? Well, a well-coached football team that's going to play tough and physical football. I mean, that's you know, what you're going to get when you play Pine Bluff. I mean, that, that is what it is. Uh, so we know, you know, they're a team that, uh, you know, they don't, uh, I think they had a punt blocked against uh, Texas Southern or, you know, they're, they're, they win that ball game. You know, so I mean, they're a good football team. And Alabama A&M, they had their chances winning at halftime, seven to six, and um, you know, and, and they're just a good football team. That's what they are. And we've got to be ready. And we got to bring our A game. And he talked about it how in the second half they just kind of fall apart at the seams. So they play a strong first thirty minutes, and that's something, you know, as a team that. And I guess what worries me, the intangibles, a team that hasn't had a lot going. You talked about the opportunities they had. They beat Morehouse in overtime. But a team just trying to find something positive. And you see how momentum shifts change in this game and how we've got to keep them off balance. Well, I mean, again, they have our utmost respect. You know I mean? And we have seven conference games left. And uh, this is the most important one. You know, so uh, 
you know, it's going to be a, a battle, and it always is in conference, and uh, we've got to be ready to play. So talk about the two quarterbacks, Terrell and Sorensen. Uh, both athletic young men uh, can throw, can run, uh, you know, uh, very versatile. And, uh, you know, they both uh, do a good job in, in Coach Jones' offense. And, and uh, you know, certainly, uh, again, you know, they're athletic quarterbacks, so they make you work. Then in the backfield, Brian Hanley, a guy that we were familiar with last year. Yeah, runs the ball hard, a hard, hard run. Defensively, Coach Monty Coleman, of course, play in the National Football League on the defensive side of the ball with the Washington Redskins. I asked him about RG3 and uh, what he's going through and, you know, a tough deal there. Kirk Cousins, and he believes Cousins will be their quarterback. He always follows the Redskins, so he knows what's going on there. But as a defensive coach, and they've got another coach in Anthony Jones, who was a, the head coach at Alabama A&M, is their offensive coordinator. When you look at their defense, what poses a problem? Well, they're a very uh, technique sound fundamentally sound defense. I mean, that's just, and always have been, you know, Coach Coleman. And so, I mean, it's a, uh, you know, that's extremely well coached and, and uh, they're going to play hard. And, and again, you know, we know we got a really good football team we got to prepare for. What is, what's the one thing that we've got to, you know, as we improve from week to week, I know there are a few things, but the one thing that you're, that you are concerned about? Let me tell you some Charles. I'm concerned about everything all the time. <laughs> I don't think there's one thing ever in my life. And so we, we just got we just got to go and, and uh, have a good week of practice, and, and that, that's what it all starts with. A couple of guys, Coach, uh, did, didn't uh, address the other night. Um, Tip McKenzie and Delance Turner, will they be available? We'll you know we'll, we'll look at that day day by day. All right, Coach Jay Hobson joining us here on the Alcorn. Pre-game show, coach. That was kind of a you know gut check first half against uh, Concordia, a great second half, and that's what the fans wanted to see. And and now you you constantly build on that, and that in a long grind of a season in the grinder, you know great second half, and you want to continue to build on that. Yeah, it's it's a positive at the end of the day when you come when you come out come out of it uh, like we did. So uh, we we got we got to grow and build on that, and uh, the journey is to get better every week, and that's what we have to do. The late Davy Whitney told me, coach. There's no such thing as a bad win. Let me tell you something. And that, <laughs> and that was a wise, wise man. And uh, if Coach Whitney says it, it's gospel to me. Coach, good luck on Saturday. Thanks, Charles. All right, that's Braves head football coach Jay Hobson. You know, the Jay Hobson radio show as he heads to practice and gets his team ready for UAPB from War Memorial Stadium. A lot to talk about, of course. One of the big highlights next season, the Braves will be uh, playing in um, in – they had, uh, in Little Rock against uh, the Arkansas Razorbacks, and they'll also be in the Swag Miak Challenge. Those are the two non-conference games. We'll be on the air at 3.30 with the Alcorn pregame show kickoff at 4 o'clock from Little Rock. We'll talk with Tim Stubbs of the UAPB Radio Network. We want to talk with Jordan Payne as well. And at halftime, Vice President of Institutional Advancement and Executive Director of the Alcorn Foundation, Marcus Ward will talk about homecoming. That'll do it for the Jay Hobson Radio Show. For our producers, Jamario Brooks, I'm Charles Edmond. Have a good week. We'll talk to you next Monday. So long.